so today we're going to be going over the AIM 120C and how to use it. Uh, so first we're going to make sure that we have everything mapped. So the things you're going to need mapped, the display management switch down, left, right, and up. You're going to need your TEMIS switch, target management switch, up, down, left, and right. You're going to need your RDR cursor switch down, left, right, and up as well. Your antenna elevation knob, counterclockwise and clockwise, and your weapon release. If you haven't seen my radar basics video, I highly recommend you watch it first before you watch this video. Uh, that way you get the hang of the radar on the F-16 and how to find targets. Once you've got that down, it makes this video much easier. All right, so as is with all my videos, this is going to be very basic. I'm not going into details. If you're looking for accuracy and details and understanding the ins and outs of the system, this is not the video. This is to get those of you who just picked up the Viper and just want to get going, hit the ground running, and start taking out MIGs. All right, so first step, make sure you've got your master arm switched to master arm. Your radar is on, RF norm. If it's down on silent, turn it on. you got your radar on. You're going to put the weapon system into air-to-air -air mode. Hit this A-A -A button. If your AIM-120s are already selected, you'll get this big circle on your hood. If they're not, go over here and make sure your SMS page is up. Select the button next to your weapon that you have and cycle through them until you have your AIM-120s. I have six AIM-120 Charlies and that's why I'm not getting anything else when I hit the button because I have no other weapons available, just AIM-120s. Put it in slave mode. Down here you've got your stations, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. You can hit the button next to it to change the station. So right now if I leave it here, I'm going to be launching this third station here this what missile the most inboard missile right here first all right we're going to go to the hsd and just push the button next to it there we go we're going to extend this out this uh, blue arc is our radar if we extend that out to 80 miles now you see that blue arc got bigger i'm going to go back to 40 miles you see how it gets smaller 20 miles and so on all right we're going to extend this out to 120, ah, and you can see AWACS is sending us data through the data link, about two targets at Angels 25, about 60 miles out. Well, 80, getting close to 60. So an F-5 Tiger is not going to show up on an F-16 radar at 60 miles, no way. So that tells me these guys are real big birds. So we're going to use the RDR cursor switch to move the cursor over one of them. Team switch up, target management switch up, and that'll bug that target. I can bug a second target, but only a second target. I cannot bug a third in range while search. Uh, range while search is right up here. You can change that by hitting the button above it. We'll do that here in a second. Once we have a target bugged, or two targets bugs, we can team switch right, and that'll cycle between the two. Right, right, right. So once it's bugged, you can fire on it, uh, so I could do Fox 3, team of switch right, Fox 3, team of switch right to come back to this one if I wanted to. If I want to go to a single target track or single track target, team of switch up a second time. And now I'm in STT mode. Now when I'm in STT mode, you'll notice I don't see the other target. In fact, I don't see anything except that target. It's exactly that single target, uh, single track target. That's it. So this isn't very helpful if you're in a really hot area. So, team switch down to deselect, come back to the normal mode. This would be SAM mode, situational awareness mode, and I can still see other targets out there, but I can only bug two. Once I've got them bugged, I've got a range bracket here. So you got this carrot. The carrot is uh, showing where we are in relation to the target. This bracket here represents the uh, maximum and the ideal range, or maximum ideal range for the, the AMRAM. You got an open bracket area and then a closed box area down here. If you launch in the open bracket, you're guaranteed to hit as long as everything remains the same, meaning he keeps flying towards you at the same altitude, same speed as he did when you first launched. As long as nothing changes and you launch in this open bracket area, you're pretty much guaranteed to hit. But that's usually not the case in, in the sim. As soon as they get the launch warning or if they uh, know that you're gonna launch on them, they're probably gonna notch you, turn around and run away. If they do that and you launched in this open bracket, most likely they can escape that 
that missile and survive. If you want to make sure that they can't escape the missile, Counter. wait till this carrot is in this closed bracket area, this box area here. You launch in here, this is the no man's zone right here. They're not going to survive that. There's ways, but it's really going to be hard for them to escape a missile that was launched within this zone here. So I'm within the zone. I can actually launch right now as long as everything stays the same. And considering I know that these guys are real big, they're probably not very maneuverable, so I'm going to go ahead and Fox 3 on both of them. Fox 3. And then I'm going to team a switch right. Cycle to the next one. Fox 3. So now I've got an AMRAM out on both. The reason I know that is uh, I've got two yellow uh, uh, rectangles behind each target. That means an AMRAM is out on each of those. You see here, A8, 7, 6. That's the time. That it's going to take before those missiles go active. Once they go active, it's going to start flashing. And that means that that missile's internal radar guidance system has taken over, and I don't have to keep it locked anymore. Then it's going to switch over to T, which is time to impact, five seconds, four seconds. So I already know which one's going to get hit and which one's... Yeah, there we go. You get a red X over it because that's the point that the computer decided that it should have hit the, the target. He should be dead. Now you can start looking out the window and looking for smoke. I see one there, and I see one there. Two kills. All right, so that's range while search mode. We're going to switch to TWS mode for the next part. All right, TWS mode. Let's go to air to air. Switch to the HSD. We're going to expand this. There they are. They're way out there. All right, so we got some time. Let's extend this out to 80 miles. Still not seeing them because they're beyond that. I can go further, but I'm probably not going to get any track on them. You can see they're still hollow because my radar cannot pick those up that far away. I'm going to go to 80 miles. We're going to sit here and wait. So let's switch to TWS. TWS, track while scan. So in this mode, we have a little bit of a benefit over RWS. In range while search, we can bug two targets max. In track while scan, we can bug, I can't remember exactly the total. I want to say it's like nine or 10 or something, or probably 12. It's more than, I can say it's more than uh, the AMRAMs that you can carry on the F-16. You can carry six AMRAMs. You can bug more targets than that. There's the benefit. The downside to TWS is because I'm also scanning while I'm tracking each target, uh, I don't have as strong of a lock on those, or as strong of a track on those uh, targets. So they could break that lock fairly easily. I can lose the lock, but I can bug multiple targets and get an AMRAM off the rail and towards them sooner and uh, to more targets at once in, instead of just two on RWS. You can switch to single target track as well by just team it up, team it switch it up again and again until you get that STT. So another benefit to TWS is soft lock. If you get a soft lock on these things, you can launch on them and uh, they will get no warning at all. They have no idea you've launched. They don't even know you've got them locked up. Nothing. So another thing is silence. They have no clue it's on its way. By the time they get warning, it's the missile's gone pitbull and it's too late. So we're going to wait till these guys get a little closer and the uh, radar starts to pick them up. There they go, starting to pick them up. But I can't really use these yet. I can select them and create a track, but they're not really ready to be bugged yet. Let me try it again here. There, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, now they're ready to bug. So I can team it right. There we go. Now we're good to go. So, box three. Box three. Now I lost the lock on that left one. And box three. All right. So that is three missiles on three targets. Counter. We're going to go ahead and turn away and put them on the gimbal of the radar. Okay, I lost lock, so I may have lost the track. Nope. But see how I keep losing the lock? So I'm not sure if those uh, missiles are still tracking. There they are. All right, they're going defensive, I can tell. So that means they are pit bull. There's one. There's two, and there's three. All right. So that's track well scan and range well search. Hope this helps some of you who uh, just started. So those of you who just got the Viper and are trying to figure out how to kill these guys on those servers, have fun.